Good morning everyone, I'm Andrew, I'm one of the conservation rangers at Hobson's Bay City Council and this morning we're down at the Enviro Centre, the Altona Library, looking at one of our taxidermied animals we have down there. Now we probably all know this is a penguin. What sort of penguin is it? It's a little penguin, that's the one we have over here. Now you may be a bit surprised to hear that we do actually occasionally get penguins in Hobson's Bay. This one, little one here, was actually found in the Williamstown foreshore a few years ago now, but we do occasionally see them around Altona Way as well. Now we believe this one came over from the colony at St Kilda, St Kilda Pier, some of you may have been over there, and somehow it found its way over here. Now what I wanted to talk to you today about was some of the ways the penguins actually adapted to living into their local environment. I think we all know they live out in the water and, and in very cold climates. So how, how do they do that? I'll firstly start by just beginning with that the thing we often forget about is that a penguin is actually a bird. Penguins and emus are two very unusual birds in that they don't fly. We always think of birds as flying. But when you look at this penguin, if you look at the wings, these things here, they're actually the penguin's flippers. So their wings have turned into flippers. So although they're too small to fly, they're very well designed to be able to swim really fast in the water, which is what it needs to do. Now a few of the other features about this penguin here is let's have a look down at its feet down here. The feet are webbed. We all know ducks have webbed feet. Ducks have their webbed feet again so they can swim around. And again, so what this penguin does is, it has the web feet to help it swim. And you'll actually find, if you see movies of the penguins alive swimming, they're very, very streamlined. They're like one long, round animal, and with the flippers, and with the web feet, paddles along really, really fast. I'm not sure if you've actually tried putting flippers on your feet at the local swimming pool or something like that. You can swim a lot faster having like these flippers or web feet on. The other thing about the feet, which you may be able to notice, is the long toes or claws on the ends there. That's so that the penguin can actually grip on, on either the rocks or the ice. Now we often see penguins in icy areas and we wonder why don't they slip? Well that's because they've got these little claws that can dig into the ice. Now little penguins, they're not found down in the ice, but they come along and like where this one would have come from, St Kilda Pier, big rock walls over there where they climb over. So they use these claws to help them grip onto the, onto the rocks and help climb around or move around on land. Now, a couple of the other things about it. Let's have a look up at the beak up the top up here, or the bill. It's very strong and it's very tough and it's been specially designed to actually help it get its food. Now, what's its food? I think we probably all know they eat fish, they eat other things like squid and also things like sea jellies as well. So the, the bill here has been designed to actually help eat those things. Now we'll come and have a look at the eyes. Most of us have probably been swimming down at the beach and you get salt water in your eyes, it really stings doesn't it? We don't like that. So why don't the penguins get salt water in their eyes all the time? They're always out in the water aren't they? They've got these special things called salt glands above their eyes, and although you can't see them on the camera here, what they do is they like filter or catch all the salt in the water and then let the clean water with no salt in it run over their eyes or wash their eyes. Really, really smart how they do that. The other thing we'll talk about is the fur of the penguin. Again, I think we all know penguins are in and out of the water all the time, live in cold climates. How do they do that? Well, to start with, they've got like a waterproof fur on their back here. It's a bit like you and I wearing a raincoat. So when they go in the water, the actual water itself doesn't get through that outer coating of fur. Now we may also, you've often probably seen documentaries, things on TV where you see the chicks, the baby penguins, standing around on the ice for it's actually usually for a couple of months on some breeds of penguins. And you wonder why don't they just go and swim in the water, get some food themselves? 
Why they don't do it is because it takes them about two months around about to actually develop the waterproof fur. Without the waterproof fur or coating they've got, they'll just freeze if they go swimming. So this little one here has got the waterproof coat on. Now underneath, it's also got a very soft, downy, feathery type um, feathers underneath as well. A bit like me wearing this jacket, so a nice woolly jacket. So really, this penguin's a bit like me going outside with this nice woolly jacket on and a raincoat on, which is keeping me dry and warm. Now while we're also looking at the fur here, let's look at the colour for a moment. You can see at the top there, it's sort of like a dark bluey grey colour. Now if the penguin's swimming along in the water and one of its predators from the air may be around, let's think of a, a sea eagle is a common one. The sea eagle's up there flying around and looks down into the water. The water's always a dark bluey colour. Same colour as the penguin. So what the penguin's doing is the penguin is camouflaging itself. It's making itself very hard to be seen by the air because it looks just like the water does. Now how about its predators in the water? Let's think of seals. I think we all know seals don't mind dining out on penguins. If a seal's swimming underneath the penguin, looking for something to eat and looking up at the sky, the sky is always lighter, it's always quite white when you're in the water looking up towards the sky. They might see the white of the penguin and not actually realise it's a penguin. So again, the penguin is using camouflage to keep away from those predators like seals in the water. Now, the final thing I'll finish up on is, what can we do to help penguins? I often get asked that question. When we think of their threats or their main predators, usually humans, unfortunately, are one of the main problems. Let's think of fishing. They might get caught up in fishing nets. We hear of oil spills that might kill everything in the water. And unfortunately, there's litter or rubbish that finds its way out into Port Phillip Bay here and out into the oceans that the penguins sometimes think is food and eat it. And we go, oh, yuck, imagine eating rubbish. So if we can avoid letting our litter go out into the bays, avoid having oil spills and things like that, then we're certainly going to help the penguins survive. On land, a couple of their major predators are foxes and cats. Introduced animals that love preying on our native birds. So if we can keep our cats indoors and try and put measures in place or do things to keep foxes and cats away, then we're also going to increase the chances of this penguin surviving. That's it from me today. Um, thanks very much for listening. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you out in our park sometime.